Jamie, what practical advice would you give to a family who realizes that between juggling two jobs, little league practices, dance lessons, and any number of other distractions, that they're really not fostering a family based on God's model of strength, presence, and love? Yeah, that's a great question because I, I think in, in a family like that, that, that would be an extremely congested, busy, always on the go family today, um, you know, you can probably nail the bookends. You can be strong and you can have love because that's more of a qualitative aspect. But you're really going to wrestle with the middle thing that we looked at today, the idea of presence, you know, because you're always on the go. And to be present with each other uh, takes downtime and it takes what, what uh, Dick Swenson in his book calls margin. The fact that we've taken all the white space off of our page, we have no margin left in our lives. We've just filled it to the end of the page with words and sentences and things like that. So really the only antidote for that, I mean, is it's, it's simple but tough, is you got to pull back. You got to pull back. I, I think, again, as we established today, there's no substituting um, quality for, with quantity or, or quantity with quality. You, you got to have quantity time with your kids. And that doesn't mean in the minivan going to the next thing or what have you. It means family with family. I, I think one of the great things to probably try to implement here would be the old time family dinner. That's one of the things that we've had a love-hate relationship with with our family. But I grew up in a family where even amidst sports and school activities and all of that, we still had family dinner every night together. And it wasn't out at the pizza joint, it was at our dinner table with the family. And so at times where we sensed we were super, super busy, we said, well, let's get back to the family dinner routine. And it's amazing what that does and just trying to abide by that with our hectic schedules. I, I think the, the only answer to that, the question is, you, you got to pull back. One other thing I would share is that, you know, today we're under immense amount of pressure based on our kids' success to make sure that they're involved in eight or nine activities at the same time whether it be ballet, soccer, language class, uh, what you name it, <clears throat> our kids are involved with that. And then travel teams adds a whole uh, another dimension to that. And I would just encourage you as parents to ask yourselves, you know, how much do my kids really need to be involved in to succeed in the way that God wants them to succeed? As mature, relationally fit, spiritually grounded adults. Because really, if you look at that through that grid, the vast majority of things that we have them involved in today really aren't going to contribute to that at the end of the day. But as Tim Kimmel points out in his book, Grace-Based Parenting, that we're having everybody read, I dare you to read that, he points out that the goals that we have for our kids on the success level really aren't the ones that God really has. They're not bad things, it's just that they're way in addition to what God has. And so when you focus rightly on the relational, emotional, spiritual aspects of God, what God wants in our kids, you realize your values start to get different, you pull back, and you focus more on different things. Thank you, Jamie.